What's going on everyone? I'm Professor Birch. Here on the channel, I've been documenting my collecting and selling journey. In today's episode, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how I'm gonna optimize my trading card inventory that I sell on eBay so I can make it a little easier to sell in person. I'm mainly a raw Pokemon card single seller. I do sell some graded cards, but raw singles, that's mainly my thing. And I tried vending in person at a local flea market and I went to Collecticon this year. And I learned uprooting your singles and taking them to an in-person event is not an easy task. A lot of people use five row monster boxes, which is like this white box I have behind me and people will store their singles in them, tab divide it out, and it's tried and true and it works great. But if you're going to an in-person event, that's not a very attractive way of going about selling your singles, and also requires people to handle your cards a little bit more. So I like it, especially for small, low-end singles, like dollar, two dollars, like that's cool. And people like digging through boxes, but for hit cards and higher end singles, I like to have that protection. A lot of people use card cases and put their singles in card cases and top loaders. And you got the tried and true binders, which I love binders. They're great, but with the ring binders, you can run into ring damage and people just kind of handling the cards and shoving them in and out of the nine pocket sleeves which could cause corner damage so it's a little bit of rocky waters using binders sometimes but i love them so today i'm going to show you guys how i'm going to try to combine some of my inventory methods with a new hybrid way of storing my singles and this may not work for everybody but i just wanted to share what I'll be doing going forward, and hopefully you might find this a little bit helpful. So let's get into it. Once I've photographed my cards for the week, I'll sort them out based on rarity, type, or IP. After I sort my trading cards and categories, I'll then top load all the hit cards and set bulk cards off to the side that will go into sorting for TCG player or my low-end single boxes. Some cards I will re-sleeve with a fresh sleeve if they're rough or been previously priced. Some pricing stickers remove easily and some not so much. I also want to make note that I like to use clear penny sleeves so when people go to inspect the card they can see the condition of the card easily. Once all the cards are top loaded, sleeved, and sorted, I then put them into one of these. As I'd mentioned, I love binders. However, this is not a typical binder. This is a top loader binder. This binder holds up to 360 cards with front and back binder loading pages. This gives a natural feel I love about browsing through binders, but provides double protection and displayability. With a top loader, you don't have to worry about your cards getting binder ring dings. Top loader binders used to be expensive, but they're not so much anymore. I was able to pick up three of them for less than $100. If you're interested in checking one of these out for yourself, I have an affiliate link in the description below. I use adhesive tab dividers to help navigate the binders a little more easily. This helps when I go to pull a card that I sold, and it also helps when I go to put inventory away. I also have a separate top loader binder that I use for non-Pokemon cards. And this helps add even more organization and makes it a little easier for browsing when people are looking through the binder. Another added bonus using a top loader binder is the fact that it's already in a top loader. All you have to do is pack it and ship it. However, I buy card saver ones in bulk and I like to ship my cards in them because they're lightweight and you can use them for more than one card. So essentially every time I make a sale, 
I'm recycling my top loaders again and again. These binders also have zippers on them, which is another layer of added protection. When you're traveling with these, you don't have to worry about debris or dust getting inside of them. Gives you a peace of mind, especially when you're traveling with your binders. Personally, I love flipping through binders, and I think it's a little more enjoyable searching for a card rather than sifting through a box or a tray. It's a little easier in my opinion, as long as you have some sort of organization method in place, they work just as well as boxes. One issue you can run into when you take inventory to an in-person event is you can easily misplace singles that are stored in a traditional fashion. Between box to binder, things can get lost or even double sold. You could sell something online and sell it in person, and then you have to end up refunding your customer online. So I highly recommend putting your store on vacation mode when you go away to sell at a card show or convention. Keeping cards in the same binder with the same labeling system, this keeps this from happening and it also allows you to do inventory of your cards much more easily. I hope that you found this helpful or entertaining in some way. If so, be sure to drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, your support is always appreciated and helps the content I create here. Good luck on your collecting and selling journey and have a great day.